and uh, good morning, I guess, and welcome to Server 2012. So, uh, today is our first lesson on how to install Server 2012 and some basic configuration for the server. And we'll also talk about uh, PowerShell, as you introduce you to PowerShell. Uh, so, let's begin. Uh, for Server 2012, the hardware that we need is we need a machine that has. 64 bit CPU, as you can see right here. We also need um, the speed has to be a minimum, these are minimum requirements 1.4 gigahertz, needs to have a gig of RAM, about 12 megabytes, and the hard drive of 32 gigabytes. So these are the minimum. Of course, the, uh, the higher the speed, the more RAM, and the more hard drive space, the better it will have. Okay, so those are the minimum requirements to be able to install the server. Uh, release 2, that's what we're going to be doing here. Uh, so what I'd like you to do is, one of the first things you should do is you should go and get a virtual box, go to virtualbox.org, and download it and install it. It's very easy to install. And, uh, you can also go to Microsoft Downloads, and you can get a 180 day free uh, server 2012 release 2. Just have to sign in, give them you know, your name and email address, and you'll get it for 180 days. I'm not going to need it for more than 180 days. Okay, set up virtual box. Make sure you do that. Let me just go through quickly through the setup. After you install it and uh, install the virtual box, you go to new. Uh, just type in a name. So, what I'd like to do is type your last name, let's say, dash server 2012. This way I'll know it's yours. And, uh, and let's see how much memory do you have. I, I usually give it, you can give it up to, I have 8 gigs, you can give it 2 gigs, 4 gigs, whatever you want. So let's say uh, I give it 3 gigs. Uh, create a virtual hard disk, you want to do that. Uh, you want to leave a virtual disk image as well. Dynamically allocate it, you can change it. Uh, make sure that the we have a hard disk, give it at least, I give it, must be 40 gigs. Ah, 32 gigs, I think. Check out the gigs. 31 is updated. And you say create. Alright? And you go to settings. Now that your hard drive is created, you go to settings. And uh, click on empty. And then when you click on right here, you the device. You should have your hard drive some. The, um, the operating system that you downloaded from Microsoft somewhere and you'll be able to look it up. Okay, so we'll be able to do that in class and we can easily do that at home as well. Alright, so that's how you set it up. And you go through the installation, let me just uh, right click and remove this because I don't need it anymore. And now once you install Windows 2 Server 2002, when you go through the installation, just remember there are only two types of server 2012, standard and beta. And the difference between them is really uh, is just the limit on how how many virtual machines you can have. The standard has usually less, and the, uh, the beta center version of server 2012 has a lot more. Well, usually it's on unlimited. Um, there's another type that comes in the box for type of people usually not for the discussion. Not a lot of people use it. Okay, uh, you can, and the way we're going to set it up and get started with this, you know, we're going to start to start the virtual box. And uh, you should never actually get the machine. So we're going to install this. I already installed in this 2012, so we're going to go through the basic configuration. After you go through the whole thing, um, uh, and you get to this point, you should be able to do what I'm doing right now. Right? Let's close these two. Uh, so this is the what you should be able to see. It's similar to like when you paint, pretty much. Uh, when you install, and this is really the should be the only time you're going to be right next to the server, physically close to it. You're going to be actually configuring it remotely most of the time. Just like we were talking about 
and we're doing this just for the cloud and the servers. And we've done that and we remotely access the devices to the cloud to configure that. All right, so let me go and do control all delete. I'm going to go to input, go to the keyboard, control all delete, and I'm already I'm going to type in my password. Uh, you'll be able to do that as soon as you are uh, finished configuration of your device. Okay. All right, first thing that comes up is the server manager comes up immediately on default. So I'll go to okay, this is really the dashboard that you will be getting. First see. Click right here, it's going to tell you to uh, configure this local server. You can actually do the same thing right here by clicking it right here. You can add, add gold, which we will do later on. On the server, this is what we're going to be doing. Add another server, service to, to manage. We have like two servers right here. We only actually have one. You'll see all the different services that we have within the different uh, services and events. Don't worry about, by the way, if they are red or turn green once they once we start configuring them later on. And you can create server groups, which we'll be able to do um, later on. Uh, if you click on manage up here, uh, you'll be able to do everything right here. But also, one thing that you could also do is remove roles and features. So that's very nice. If you want, for example, the server not to be a DHCP, just go right here and go to attack. Okay, and um, what else did I want to say? Oh, when you go right here to tools, this pretty much looks like the Windows 98, uh, Windows 98, Windows 2008 administrative, um, the administrative tools menu, right? So this is pretty much the same. Um, everything, the view, this view, you know, you can play with this around if you don't like the way it looks, if you want to zoom in, zoom out. All right. So let's just give you a quick intro introduction to what the dashboard looks like. Here you just click refresh and it refreshes it all the configuration that you did. All right. So let's configure the server. Click on configuring the server. And the first thing I want to do is change the controller name. So click right here. And then you click on change. And let's name it um, Lord Server 1 to 12. This should, okay, leave it as a word group. We're going to be able to create it as a domain later on. Click on OK. And it says you must restart the computer. So let's, let's do that. And let's restart now. Let it restart. Alright, so while this is restarting and uh, take it take it back, a couple of other things we should know. Um, the server should be also, uh, we're going to be able to, um, let me see, when we do the, oops, oops, already, so I don't even have to say anything now. We'll talk about that later on. Keyboard, control, delete, and my password. I want you to be able to do the same thing, okay? Finish everything that I'm doing, and I'll tell you what's, you know, what you need to submit. Actually, all you need is to take a snapshot of the screen when we get to a specific thing. Oh, sorry. Let's go. Uh, let's go to configure the server. I'm sorry. I'm going to this out. Configure this. Go back to configuring the server, and you'll see that the computer name has changed. Uh, the word group. Let's just leave it the way. Uh, the way it is, uh, let's get to a uh, firewall. Typically, you want to leave it when you are in the production, you want to leave it on if you are going live. But since this is a testing environment, you want to turn the firewall off. So, click on it, go and turn it off the firewall. In public and the private networks. Okay, like I said, in real in other, in production environments, you don't want to do that. Me. All right, so um, let me close that. And it's still on, by the way. So if I hit refresh, don't worry about that. We will pick up that on. See, if you hit refresh, it comes back up. Remote management, you want that to be enabled, okay? Because we want, like I said to you earlier, you really want to remotely access your um, 
your server all the time. Remote desktop, I'm going to enable that in here as well. Click on that, allow remote management, and apply, and then click OK. Again, it will come up later on, so I can hit refresh, and it will come up. This is the reason. Nick teaming is when you um, leave that disabled. That's really not going to do much with it. This is when you have a whole bunch of Nicks that actually get together and be able to be allow the server to have uh, multiple connections. But the Ethernet connection, you don't want the server to have an ABACP IP address. You want that static IP. So click on it. Uh, you can go to click on the Ethernet NIC, go to properties. With this and uh, click on IPv4 <coughs> properties, and you want to use the following address. So let's give it the address 192.168. Oops, oops, 192.168. Let's say 100, 100. Hit the tab key, you get the mask, hit the tab key. You want the default gateway to be 192, 168, 10.1. The DNS server, also we want it 192, 168, 10.1. All right, so before you click OK, uh, take a snapshot of this. I wanted to be able to see this. So this is one of your screen uh, snapshots that you will submit. So take that and paste it in a Microsoft Word. Okay, so click OK, close, and close, and close, and I'll do a refresh on this guy just to make sure. There we go, we got the IP address. I'm going to scroll by over. All right, now, when it comes to last installed updates, we really want it to be able to do that. So uh, let's configure Windows updates and turn automatic updates on. We want it to turn on. Um, it says Windows could not search for new updates. Let's see. Let's see if it says right here. You are set to automatically install updates. Maybe it's not allowing you to do that. Oops. Wait, click on never. Let's say check for updates. We're having problems. But this should be set up and configured for um, updates. So it's not allowing, I think, because it's a, a version that's um, just a temporary version. Okay, error reporting. I'm going to leave that off. Uh, typically, you leave that on if you are in production so you can send any errors that might occur to Microsoft so Microsoft can come up with patches. But since we are doing uh, we are in production environment I mean we are in a testing environment, I'm gonna leave that alone. Along with the uh, the customer participating, I'm gonna leave that off. The IE in half security, uh, I'm gonna turn that off. But, uh, again, we're going to leave that on if it's um, if you are going to be in the production area. All right, so this is just for your testing environment, and uh, that's pretty much it. All right, I'm going to click on refresh, and uh, hope everything will be going to be picked up. All right, so. That's pretty much it for configuring the server. So I'll again, take another snapshot of this. So now I need a snapshot of the screen so I can actually see your computer name and everything that we have configured this local server to be. All right, the next thing I wanted to really talk about that you should be familiar with, by the way, you wanted to see the servers in the, in the, in the bottom, just go to view. Um, actually, it's not even Let's see if you go down. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so I'll go down to the dashboard. Back to the dashboard. Now, the other thing that you should be familiar with is something called the PowerShell. PowerShell is something that a lot of engineers call it the new advanced command prompt. So, um, what you really want to do is, is, uh, 
is to eat. I'm going to get you familiar with PowerShell. You can do a lot of scripting, a lot of design. You can spend a whole semester really learning how to use PowerShell. Um, but I need you to really know how to get to it. And so you submit an every case. Uh, you are asked to do something within PowerShell or, or to do some scripting. Uh, so to access PowerShell is what you really, what you can do is you can do it from right here. So you can click right down on the bottom of the desk bar. Here's your PowerShell. One way to access it. Uh, you can also access it by going to from the start menu. It's, it's right here. Okay. And uh, or you can um, you can click, move your mouse all the way to the top right. All the way. And you'll get this menu, and you can actually get the start menu in here and the settings, right? So you click on the start menu. And by the way, when you're in the start menu, as you can see, if you go all the way on the bottom, you'll see that little start menu. It comes back up again if you, if you really want it, right? And you see there's no search button, but there is one. So all you have to do is click right inside right here, and let's say you want the command prompt. You've got CMD. It comes up immediately, right? You don't need, you don't need to look at the uh, you don't need the search box. So click on I want you to open up the command box. Okay? And uh, put that on the side. And let's open up a PowerShell. See the difference between them. And uh, let me click that right underneath. And you just type in the commands to see the difference. I want you to type uh, the command, let's say, hold on a second. Uh, when it comes to, let's do the command uh, net start net dot the word net space start and get up. So this is all the different command, uh, uh, automatic services that are starting. You can do the same thing with uh, in PowerShell as well. So that shows you the same thing. But in PowerShell, you can do a lot more. There are different commands. Let me just keep that up a little bit. Different commands that you can get. You can use the word get and dash, and you can use the tap key. As you can see on the bottom right here, I don't know if you can see it, it gives you, like you would like in the Cisco operating system, you can use the command. So if you put a space, question mark, oops, space, let's say get, um, um, or let's say, not get a, it's a, it's a let's say I want to get dash bar S for services. I'm going to hit the tab key. It says, command S schedule, or let's say, let's say service. Space uh, let me see. Nope. Let me see that is. It, maybe it's not helping us. It's supposed to give you all the different parameters they get with the command get service. Uh, but it's not doing that for us. Okay, that's okay. Um, so Let me right click right on here. Well, these are the commands. There are additional commands that you can do in, um, in PowerShell. But if I go and do right click on PowerShell Hello, let me close it. Right click on PowerShell, and I want you to go into the Windows PowerShell ISC. This is called the Integrated uh, Script Environment. This is where you can actually do a little bit more in PowerShell. Right? So here is where I can actually just get. And uh, see, it comes up immediately. I can choose which get do I want. I want get S and I want SVR get service, right? So uh, you can actually choose any of these that you want. So get service space. Let me see if that works. Nope. 
get service and uh, you gotta remember the first thing you write the word W. No? Where what is it? Get service still but it's you think it's not showing us. Or by the way, I don't even remember the command that I want to do. There are all the different commands that you can have. So you can say here get service. So you can click on it right here, get service. This is if you like to use your mouse in your right to run the command. And you can say I want dependent services to be shown. Display the name, you can choose whatever you want. So you don't have to remember page names. All the commands are right here on your right hand side. You use PowerShell really to, um, to do scripting more than anything else. It's beyond the, uh, the scope of this course, so we're not really going to be doing anything, in, anything with, um, with PowerShell right now. All right, so um, this is it. This is, okay, the last thing I want you to do is take a snapshot of this right here, and I want you to take a snapshot that you know how to enter the PowerShell or ISD. So I'll take a screenshot of this showing you the command prompt that you went through this, and that will be your third uh, snap um, screenshot. Put all three of them together in Microsoft Word. All right. Uh, and right also at the end, I want you to write the steps on installing, you know, uh, Windows 2008. Um, and what are the uh, requirements for uh, the hardware requirements for Windows 2008? Okay, so just the step number one, you know, you just put in the, you can do it from the virtual box or straight out, if you remember the, um, the steps on how to do that. With Windows 2008. All right, and uh, until the next video, I'll talk to you guys later.